What's good guys, welcome back to the seventh episode now of the Miami Dolphin franchise mode. I've had a really good time recording it and I hope you guys have had a great time watching it. If you did miss last episode, we were playing a London game against the Jaguars. It was a little bit of a trouncing, but I still suggest that you go and watch that video. You should see a card over here or over here. I can't, I don't really know which side it's on right now, but again, really hope you guys go and check that out. It was a really good video. And again, check out the whole series, man. There's a whole playlist, Miami Dolphins franchise on my channel. So if you want to watch the whole series in order, use that playlist and you'll be able to watch every video in order. So again, go check out the Jaguars video and go check out the rest of the series. Now, we are back here onto the game in Madden and we are in week seven playing against the Falcons. Again, they're more of a rebuilding team. So hopefully we can come out with the win. But we do have a couple activities here to start. The biggest thing, which I'm super happy about, Jalen Phillips is back in the lineup, baby. Let's make sure he's in there as a rush and as well. But Jalen Phillips is back, which is awesome to see. I love to see it because he was a guy who I really wanted to have a big game and or sorry, not a big game, but a big season this year. So it's really nice to see him back. So really nice to see Jalen Phillips back because that is a huge addition back for the season. And then we also have this offensive breakout. So I believe this is still about Jalen Waddle, which it is. And he says, I feel like the last couple of weeks, the offense has really been getting going. Everybody wants their number called when it's time to make a play. We say that's the exact mentality we want to have. If we're all ready to shine each week, it only helps us more be effective as an offense. Now, after that, the goal is pay it forward. Throw three touchdowns against the Falcons for a passing game boost. I was going to go into this game trying to run the ball, but I guess we are looking for three passing touchdowns with Tua Tunga Bailoa. Maybe what we'll do is we'll run the ball down the field and throw the touchdown with Tua, so that is good to see. Speaking of passing the ball with Tua, I didn't even notice this, but if you go to the stories, this is what Tua had to say to Arthur Smith, the coach of the Falcons right now. Finn's quarterback Tua Tagovailoa claims that the schemes of Falcons coach Arthur Smith will do nothing to slow him down. So Tua is going in with a lot of confidence. Just before we get into the game, we are going to take a look at the weekly strategy as always, as we are trying to stop Cordero Patterson. Mostly, so let's just do defend short passes. That will help defend the short pass and it might actually help defend that run game to the outside as we are defending that short game. So defending the short pass against Marcus Mariota. Honestly, I am not too scared of this Falcons defense, but I am actually going to do run outside because they do have two pretty good corners with AJ Terrell and Casey Hayward. So let's do run outside. We do want to get that run game going. And their D-line isn't amazing, even though Grady Jarrett is pretty good. Going into the team profile here, again, focus players are going to remain the same. In terms of the weekly team goal selection, let's actually do throw two TD passes because we need to throw three anyway. In terms of the defensive coordinator, let's go allow under four yards of carry and see if we can stop Cordero Patterson. And then for the offensive coordinator, we will do get three passing TDs because obviously that's already the goal already. Then head coach, we're going to do win turnover battle because again, we want to avoid those turnovers as in the last few games, we haven't been throwing picks, but we haven't fumbling the ball. So that is what we're going to do here. Again, just got Jalen Phillips back, back from injury and Raekwon Davis still has a couple weeks left on the injury bill. So hopefully we don't suffer any new injuries in addition to Raekwon Davis. As again, we just got Jalen Phillips back. So that's really good to see. Nothing on the offensive side of the ball. So that is really good to see again. I always say the same stuff here, but it is. It's great to see when there's no injuries during practice. It's a huge boost to us, and it makes us have our best players on the field, which is obviously what you want. So with that being said, I'll see you at kickoff. Kicking off to start the game, and we are going with the turquoise top and all white bottom. Kind of the reverse of last game with the all turquoise bottoms and white top, as we will get to see Marcus Mariota's stats as he comes onto the field. Let's see what he's been doing so far. Pretty average, six touchdowns, three picks, two to one touchdown to interception ratio. Not too bad there, but also pretty good for what Marcus Mariota is. He is a little bit of a, he's kind of just a gap though, a stop gap for that QB position. But again, he is actually pretty electric as they do go to the first way to quarter out Patterson. We do a good job to get the stop and only allow him to get two yards. Even though Marcus Mariota is a stop gap quarterback, he actually is pretty electric, at least with his legs as well. So he is kind of a dual threat QB. So we definitely need to keep our eyes out for that. Other than that, though, I don't think his arm is the most impressive, so just trying to play good defense here. As they do get the ball to Calvin Ridley, who is still in this franchise, I didn't want to keep him out of the game somehow by, like, making him a punter or something and then, like, forget to make him receiver again, so I just kind of left him in the game, even though... And honestly, in my league, it's like, I don't think he really should have been suspended for that long anyway, so I guess for me, as a league commissioner, I didn't suspend him, so yeah, Calvin Ridley is still in the game as Marcus Mariota is getting the ball there to Kyle Pitts. By the way, so obviously we're in last year's schedules, which is unfortunate, but it is what we had to do. But last year, man, 
Kyle Pitts dominated us, man. Kyle Pitts went crazy against us. Like, it was a crazy game from Kyle Pitts. It was one of his breakout games. So, definitely want to change that in the Madden game here as we're using Javon Holland on Cordell Patterson, who also did really well against us in the against Miami last year. So, definitely that. As we do get a hit on the quarterback, as Marcus Mariota makes a crazy pass. To be honest, I was laid out with the reaction with Javon Holland because I thought he wasn't even going to make that pass. But somehow Cordero Patterson got to that ball and I was like, what the hell? I don't know how he got to the ball. As Christian Wilkins gets a free rush and gets a sack. But yeah, going back to that play, I don't know how Cordero Patterson got to that ball as Marcus Mariota got hit as he threw and he made an incredible pass as he got the first down. But Christian Wilkins catches a body and brings down Marcus Mariota. Cover one on top of the field with a little bit of his own here, Brandon Jones, as we will use your hand. Going to guess the pass, as they probably will guess the pass for second and 17. Looking at everything, and Marcus Mariota is trying to run, so we are going to send Channing Tindall as he does miss the play. And then Marcus Mariota does slide, so that is really unfortunate, making it third and inches when he probably should have got the first down too, but we did do a horrible job there on that play. Again, Marcus Mariota being that dual threat quarterback, it's really hard to stop those types of quarterbacks in Madden, so... It's really unfortunate. As Cordero Patterson shoots out Xavier Howard, and he's running to the pylon, but Atlanta Roberts makes a nice tackle. But yeah, man, even though this offense is like lower rated in terms of their overalls for some of these guys, I'm not gonna lie. Like Marcus Mariota being that dual threat quarterback, and got, having guys like Kyle Pitts, Cordero Patterson, Calvin Ridley, like it's not the easiest offense to stop, to be honest. As they do go to, back to the run, and they run it in for the easy touchdown. Not the greatest start on defense, as we do allow a touchdown on the first drive for another straight game. Honestly, I think a big part of our defense going forward should be trying to get that initial stop, as that will really help the flow of the game going forward. Coming back onto the field, we do want our offense to make up for the defensive shortcomings here. As I was going to run the ball, but it looks like they are clogging up the box. So let's run this mesh post play. Starting off with the passes, we do need Tua to have a good game, as I do see Waddle kind of open if he can make the aggressive catch, which he does. A great start to the game. Tua to Jalen Waddle. That's our dynamic duo on offense. As much as I love Tyreek, the young duo is Jalen Waddle and Tua Tagovailoa. As we're going to run this RPO play, which does look really interesting. See if we can get Cedric Wilson, as they do get blocks out there. So let's give the ball to Cedric Wilson, as he does do a good job to get five yards there again. We do want to run the ball for the most part here, but again, we do need to throw those three touchdowns for that goal for Tua Tunga Meloa, as that will help us out a lot, as you can see that goal in the top left. Giving the ball to Raheem Moser here, as we do get good blocks, but they do a good job to shed that block on JC Treader, and they get the stop third and three. Let's see what we want to do here. I'm going to start off with the quick pass play here, as I do like Tyreek on this slant, so we're, we'll see if we can hit him on that slant I do like him out of the field but I don't see him but I do see Mike Kosicki open over the middle and he does get the first down not really over the middle but on the right side there as he was wide open on that little out route going back to the mesh play as they are showing a blitz so let's make sure we get the ball out but they do drop two into the backfield as I see Waddle underneath but unfortunately Tua makes a little bit of an inaccurate pass so yeah going back to the run here with Chase Edmonds trying to get some yards on the ground as Edmonds does a good job to do that getting five yards on that rush as he's been pretty good with his limited touches but we are going to go back to the pass with it being third and five i do like this play a lot as we have both of our receivers on the out route and then we have Gusicki and Cedric wilson over the middle so it's a nice little play as mike Gusicki is opening makes an amazing catch to get the first down this again he has definitely earned that contract extension Running back to the left side with a halfback stretch with Raheem Oster. If Alkin can get a nice block here as he does, but unfortunately we do get wrapped up in the back road. I guess not. They said he did get a yard there, so we will take that. Going to go back to the RBO here as if that cornerback on Tyree Kill steps back, we'll give him the chance. If not, we'll just run with Raheem Moser as he does step back. But I do like the play with Raheem Moser a little bit more as I glanced over and I saw all the space that Raheem Moser had. So even though the defender did back up on Tyreek, I figured we might as well still go to Raheem Moser. But let's go back to the RPO, man. Tua is really good out of the RPO. That's one of his strengths as a quarterback. So let's use that to our advantage. Looking at Waddle on the slam, which I do see him open. So as he makes a secret catch, Tua is amazing out of that RPO. And that quick pass, as you guys probably do know. Using the jet pass, fake zone to Tyree Kill. We'll actually flip the play here so it's to the long side. And it actually will be Cedric Wilson. But let's see if we can get a crazy kind of trick play touchdown here with Cedric Wilson going across. As he gets the ball and we cut up the field. Maybe I should have went around the outside, but I thought cutting it up might give us a little bit more. But it doesn't. So it is third and two. I don't know why they're giving us this play, play action middle shot when we're so close to the goal line. So... Let's give the ball to Raheem Moser on third and two. We're going to keep it to the right side here. 
and we're going to see if we can cut up the middle for that first down. So we can see if we can get blocks as we don't, as they do stop us. And Kyle Van Noy did sign with the Falcons in this franchise, and he is now hurt. It is fourth and four, and I'm just going to take our points here, as that is what Mike McDaniel wants us to do, as I don't want to risk us not getting points here after that drive. So let's just make the kick with Jason Sanders down the middle, and hopefully we can get a stop and then take the lead on the next drive. As the Falcons come back onto the field, passing the ball with Marcus Mariota, as I don't know what happened to Xavier Howard there. I don't know what happened to Vaughn Hall. It makes the tackle for him. I really have no idea what happened. It's like he did a little stutter step and Xavier just froze. Have no idea what happened there. As Drake London, the Atlanta Falcons first round pick in this recent draft, gets the catch and does and kind of routes up Xavier Howard. Like I, I'm stuttering now because it's really a weird sentence to say because I have no idea what happened to Xavier Howard on that play. It's like he just froze. So that was really weird to see. But hopefully we can get back in this as we are using Javon Holland over the top. And we are looking at a run, but they are motioning a tight end over. Usually Javon Holland over the top, covering the middle blue as they do run the ball. And Jalen Phillips comes up to make the tackle with Javon Holland, helping the two young stars making the tackle as Tua Tungavailoa looks on. But yeah, Jalen Phillips being back and making that play is really awesome to see. I was really kind of upset when I saw that he went down to, with an injury as I think he's one of our young studs and our young superstars. So... It was really unfortunate to see that. As Emmanuel Ogba just makes the most crazy sack I might have ever seen. He hops the block and gets a sack. Emmanuel Ogba has been incredible for us. And we do hold the Atlanta Falcons to a field goal here. And we are going to go for the block with Quincy Wilson. But man, I cannot talk enough about that play by Emmanuel Ogba. I really cannot believe what I've just seen. I really cannot believe what I've just seen. He hopped the block in the backfield and still got the sack. That was incredible. Holding them to a field goal was super clutch as it does keep it a one score possession. So let's go get a touchdown on this drive and tie this game up. As Sharar and Omstead gets a nice block on that run play as we're going to continue with the run here as it does seem to be working. But yeah, that was a crazy play by Emmanuel Ogba. I'm still talking about it. Honestly, I've never seen that animation in a Madden game. So that was really cool to see as you do get a little bit of yards with that Trace Edmonds run. As you are going to speed up the play here and go no huddle. Looking for the first down. His Waddle does look open for the secure catch, and he does make the catch. Seven for eight for 58 yards for Tua. Not too bad so far, only missing one pass. As again, we're going to continue with the run here. Really want to get the run game going. But yeah, it is really crazy, man. I'm still thinking about that main logo play again. I know I might be annoying, but it's really weird to see that animation just because I played Madden a lot. Like, I played every Madden and played franchise for the last few years, and I've never seen that animation before. So it's a really... It's really kind of cool to see that animation where he literally hops a blocker and still gets the sacks. That was really cool to see. As, man, the Falcons are doing a pretty good job of stalking the run as Raheem Mostert only has six rushes for 17 yards. So now we are forced to go with the pass here because, man, they've done a good job on our run so far. So we definitely need to use the pass here. Hopefully convert this first down and keep moving the chains. As I do see Mike Kosicki deep. I don't know if I had someone else open. I might have. And Mike Kosicki almost came down with the catch. Except the second defender came in and did knock it loose. So we are forced to punt. Mike Kosicki did almost make the catch at the beginning. But unfortunately, the second defender did come and knock the ball out. A decent punt there from Thomas Morstead. As it is first and 10 from only the 17. So a decent punt there from Morstead. As they are going back to the pass. And he makes a great catch there. Marcus Mariota is 5 for 5 for 84 yards. And man, their defense has even stepped up more than I thought they would. So our offense is really kind of struggling to put up points here. And their offense is putting up points on us. I wasn't really expecting this. I'm not going to lie. I was expecting this to be a way easier game. Because I thought they were going to be. As, as you saw in the ratings at the beginning of the game. The ratings aren't that good overall. I know their offense, like I said, was a little bit underratedly good. In terms of in-game play. But... When you look at their ratings, it was only like a 78 and 76 offense or whatever it was. Somewhere in the high 70s, which isn't that good for Madden for Madden ratings. So I was not expecting this as they are kind of dominating us right now. Up 10 to 3 with the second half almost over. Like we need to pick it up here for sure. Using training Tindall over the middle. Hopefully let's get a stop and put up points before the half as that is the goal of this possession. As he's going deep to Calvin Ridley for the touchdown. Blown coverage there. I don't know if that was Javon Holland or who that was. But Calvin Ridley goes deep. And Marcus Mariota flings it up to him as I'll leave this play up here. As I don't know what happened there. Ridley just ran a streak deep 
on that dagger play, and it was an easy touchdown for the Falcons, and now they are up 17-3. Back on offense for the two-minute drill. I'm not going to lie, my game plan has completely changed now, and we will change that game plan at half. I was just coming in here to run all over them, but they have stopped the run completely, and now we do have that goal for three touchdowns anyway, and we're already down 14 points, so it's time to let the ball fly, as that's what we're, we're going to try and do on this first play with Tua Tungabailoa. As I don't see him open, I'm going to playmaker Raheem Mosher. Oh, the sideline, he does a good job to stay in bounds and get a bunch of yards, but yeah, even though it's a two-minute warning, so we are going to fling the ball anyway, even going to the second half, we're going to start passing the ball because that's what's needed, man. The Falcons have done a great job stopping the run, so we need to go to the pass down and let Tua Tunga by Loa let the ball rip. An incompletion on that first down, and it is second and ten now, continuing with the pass after the two-minute warning. Looking for anyone open as I do see X over the middle. Cedric Wilson does a good job to make that catch. And we are going to go into the hurry up right away. And we do need to pick up this first down. Let's run a misdirection here. See if we can get Ricky Moser to get the first down. As I do see a gap in the defense and we get the first down with the run. Now again, we got to keep the play going and have to keep the no huddle going because it is the two minute drill. As I don't see anyone open yet. I don't see anyone open yet. Tyreek on the baseline. But Tua flings it all the way up. And thank God he drops an interception. I don't know what happened there. I don't know what happened with Tua on the pass. But it does stop the clock. That was a really bad throw from Tua Tungabailoa. I never want to see that again. Gonna send Waddle deep here just to see if he can get open. But he doesn't. Don't see anyone open here. I do see Kasiki on the sideline. Makes a secret catch and gets out of bounds. Man, Kasiki has had the most sure hands of this team this year so far. Running the bench play here because again we do need our routes going to the outside as it is the two minute drill I am going to see if Tyree can make this play as he does make the catch but it's out of bounds He does put his arms up for the touchdown thinking he got in bounds but unfortunately he was not I thought he could have made that play he does make the catch but his feet were not in bounds So that is really unfortunate again keeping the passes going here as I do see Waddle over the middle And he makes the catch and the run and we are going to call our first timeout as this is one of the biggest third downs of the game already Third and four here, and this is a continued drive, running this play action play. Hopefully they bite on it. And we do have Waddle to get the first down, secure catch, as I do not think he got the first down, actually. They do get the stop, but we are going to go for it, man. I don't think a field goal does too much for us here, and we do need the first down. So let's go with the Y stick here and see what they run. Okay, so they are running a full blitz, so we are looking for Tyreek or Waddle over the middle as they do run that and Tyreek does get open and makes the catch let's call a timeout that's a huge play from Tyreek Hill as they sent the all-out blitz and we do a good job to make a quick pass to Tyreek Hill learning from that Bucks game and from that Bucks mistake as that's a huge play to get that first down now let's see if we can put up seven points to end this half as I am looking everywhere, I don't see anyone open. Get a rollout with Tua. Tua has daylight in front of him, and he does a good job to get out of bounds as well. Not fumbling the ball. One rush for nine yards. Good play by Tua Tunga by Loa. Because we do have one timeout left, I am going to use that timeout on the run here, as I do want to see if we can get the run going. Raheem Moser does not get the first down, so I, we do have to use our timeout. It's now third and one. Now it's integral that we do get this first down. We are going to pass the ball just because we do not have any timeouts left, and we are going to run this mesh concept. Need a first down here for sure. As Smythe is open underneath, and he does get his first touchdown of the season. Durham Smythe, a really underrated tight end, and he hasn't done too much this franchise, but that's an awesome first touchdown for him as you do get the first touchdown for that goal for Tua Tungabailoa. A good ball from Tua, a good touchdown. Thank God we put up some points before the half ended so we can stay in this game. As the Falcons come onto the field here, I assume they're just going to throw some Hail Marys or something. So if you are seeing this, something did happen, but we are in the zone. If you're not seeing this, I just cut it out. As Matt Ryan does make a good throw to the outside of the field. He hasn't missed a pass yet. Sending the heat at Marcus Mariota, hoping that he does make an uncharacteristic mistake. Using Javon Holland here on Kyle Pitts myself. And I do make a good play. As Xavier Howard, I went for the pick on Drake London. And Javon Holland does a good job to make the tackle as they do call their first time out, which is smart. I was really hoping Xavier Howard can get another interception as he didn't have one last game. And that really ended the streak, which is unfortunate. But we still want to keep getting interceptions. As you see, Drake London having 60 yards already as he's been great. As he is a first-round rook. And he's been balling out, at least for this game, with Marcus Mariota. Using Channing Tindall over the middle here. As he does go to the outside. And they do make the catch for Daryl Patterson on the sideline. As they do call a timeout, so I guess he didn't get out of bounds. But again, really trying to hold them to not get any points here. 
That is the goal of this drive, as if we can get a stop here or on the next downs, we should be able to keep them without getting points. And hopefully if we do, we can get a touchdown on the next drive and tie this game up really quick as we do get the ball to start half. As we're using Channing Tindall, passing him over to the next zone. Now we're stepping up on Marcus Mariota, and Marcus Mariota just runs around us and takes a hit and does not fumble as they used their last time out. Will they kick a field goal here or will they run a play? We will see as it does look like they're kind of being smart here and taking their points without running another play. Hopefully we can actually block this with Quincy Wilson if we can get to the kicker here, but we can't as he does make the field goal. So the Falcons do go up 20 to 10 as this is a two possession game. So now I'm getting points on our first possession of the second half is even more integral than before. As we do get to halftime here, and we are going to do throw it deep because we are down 10 points. We definitely need to stop the run. We are just going to defend the deep passes so we don't have anything like that Calvin Ridley touchdown happening again. Now, it is 20 to 10 to start the second half. The good thing is we get the ball. But let me just commentate over this kickoff for a second as I usually don't show you kickoffs. But, man, the Falcons have played so much better than I thought they have. We're 5-1. I don't even remember what they are, but they're definitely not that. I believe they're 2-3 and three or something like that. And, again, their team is nowhere near as good as ours, and they are already leading 20-10. to 10, So we really need to get going here, score some points, because they are really outperforming us, and that was really surprising. Like, genuinely, I was expecting to just come into this game and kind of get an easy win, make it a nice little episode as Raheem Mostert has a nice run here to start the second half to make his efficiency way better but yeah i really thought we we're gonna come here get the easy win and just kind of walk out of a or not even out of atlanta but stay at home and get an easy dub as we are even at home and they're up 20 to 10 so atlanta has come down here to miami and really put the put the pressure on so Jalen waddle on that middle route as he does get the ball and he drops it again if you remember from last week's Jaguars episode, whenever I do an aggressive catch with Jalen Waddle, he seems to drop it, which is super weird. That's super annoying, and I don't know why that keeps happening. But like I said, man, the Falcons have really come out here and outperformed their expectations, which is super annoying. And what happened there with Tua Tagovailoa? As it says, it's an inaccurate pass, but there's no pressure. So why was it inaccurate? And he does have the superstar abilities where he should be accurate when he's set in the pocket. What happened there is Tua is really selling the bag right now. And then Waddle sold the bag on the drop. I don't know what's happening. The Falcons are really coming out here and performing really well. As I do see Waddle open on that out route. What a ball from Tua. And what a catch. Not Waddle, sorry. That's Tyreek Hill on the out route. What a ball from Tua right over the linebacker. That was a great ball to lead him off the field. As he does need to start making throws like that. Man, Waddle and then Tua selling on back-to-back -back plays. That is not something I expected to happen. We will switch to the run here as they're only rushing three. So we should get a positive yardage here as we do. As Chase Edmonds gets the first down and more. As we do need to drive down on this field. And oh no, Toronto Armstead is hurt. Hopefully it's not that serious of an injury. But I will say, when the Miami Dolphins did sign Toronto Armstead, which again was an incredible signing. I'm not saying it's not. The only thing with that signing was the injury history that Toronto Armstead has had in his past. So... Hopefully that's not the case in the game, but he definitely is injured right now. Hopefully it's something where he can come back in the game as this play has just not worked for us. As Cedric Wilson does have one rush for negative three yards on that play. That play is not good. And it's only bruised ribs, not broken ribs. So Toronto Armstead is oh good to go as he will be back in this game. Thank God. Now it's now second and 13, so we definitely need to pass the ball. But thank God Toronto Armstead is okay. So now we are going to pass the ball here. Jalen Waddle does get open on that out route. And he runs up the field to get yards. Making up for his job earlier in the drive. But man, again, really weird to see Tua and then Waddle having two back-to-back -back bad plays. Let's go back to the pass with this drive corner play. Because again, the run game wasn't working in the first half. Really using Tua's arm and hoping to throw a touchdown here for that goal. Waddle does get open over the middle. And he runs up the field not to get the first down. But we are in the red zone. First and goal here, obviously going with the pass because that is what the goal requires. So we do need three passing touchdowns with Tua Tagovailoa. So that is why we're doing that. As well, it does get open over the middle. A nice low pass from Tua Tagovailoa to Jalen Waddle. As we get the touchdown to a second passing touchdown of the day to bring us within three points as we will make this kick with Jason Sanders as that is accurate and it is right down the middle. A huge drive to start the half with Tua Tagovailoa after those two really weird plays from Tua and Waddle as they do make up for it as they are the two players to convert on the touchdown. Down. And again, closer to that goal, closer to tying this game. Let's get a stop and take back the lead. User and Channing Tindall here on the man to man with that middle zone play, trying to cover everything as he does go to Calvin Ridley and he sheds a tackle from Nick Needham. But Xavier Howard does do a good job to get over there. And Marcus Mariota is still 11 for 11 for 200 yards and a touchdown. He's literally not missed a pass yet, so that is crazy. We need to get an incompletion from Marcus Mariota as he is balling out right now. He still hasn't missed a pass. 
The Atlanta Falcons did have second and one after that play, but they did just do a false start as it is the second year tight end, Kyle Pitts. So we will take that as it is now second and six instead of second and one. Again, need the defense to step up here and hopefully get an incompletion from Marcus Mariota as he is again 11 for 11 playing out of his mind as he makes another good pass to number 17. And again, he still has not missed a pass. 12 for 12, 225 yards. Marcus Mariota putting on a show. I was talking about how he's scared of Marcus Mariota, even though he's a low overall, just because of his dual threat ability. But he's really showing off the arm here as he hasn't missed a pass yet. And now they go back to the run. As it is a great play by Emmanuel Ogba, man. Emmanuel Ogba is such a stud as he gets him at the line of scrimmage. But man, Marcus Mariota, man, he's really showing out with the arm. I think he might have set, took what I said personally is he's really showing off the arm here. Usually in Javon Holland, as it is a delay play to Cordero Patterson. But our rookie, Channing Tindall, makes an incredible play to stop him in the backfield as is now 3rd and 12. Going to throw them off with the zone as we have been running predominantly. Man, usually Nick Needham over the middle here. And hopefully we can get a stop here and force Marcus Mariota's first missed pass. And hopefully get us a stop on defense as he does take off with the run. And uh, I don't know if we got the first down with that dive. As it is fourth and in inches and they are going for it. So this is huge as they do have Marcus Mariota in the game with Cordero Patterson and a fullback. Going to use your Alan and Roberts here and hopefully get a stop. As they do run the ball and we get the huge stop. That is Zach Sealer, our bench player, coming in to make an incredible play. As they went for it on fourth and two and we came up big on defense. That is a huge stop. I am hyped. Tyreek is getting pressed, so we're actually going to send him on a route. We're going to leave Edmonds on that route as well. I am so hyped for, for Zach Sealer on that play. That was a huge play for him. As Tyreek does do a good job to be his man. We lob it up there. And Tyreek makes an incredible catch. Tua to Tyreek Hill. And again, after that incredible stop by Zach Sealer and our defense. Let's keep the ball rolling here against Atlanta Falcons. And let's get the lead in this game. Back to the pass here, looking at Waddle as he is the guy who we are looking at as well. Does an amazing job on that row. And he has daylight, daylight ahead of him. Jalen Waddle, touchdown. Two tongue of to Jalen Waddle again as that duo continues to be electric in our offense. Legion of Zoom with two tongue of as we take the lead 24 to 20. First and 10 now for the Falcons as Marcus Mariota. Marcus Marigota, honestly, after this game, he's Marcus Marigota now. I will never not call him Marcus Marigota as that is what he is as he still has not missed a goddamn pass. 13 for 13, he's Marcus Marigota from now on. But yeah, after starting the half down 20 to 10, we're now up 24 to 20. A huge play by our defense, a huge play by our offense as now let's finally get a stop on Marcus Marigota. For the rest of the series, I will not call him not Marcus Mariota. Cordero Patterson does a good job, but a great tackle there from Byron Jones. But yeah, Marcus Mariota showing why he did get that starting job in Atlanta. And again, even though we have the lead, he is playing well. So again, his name is Marcus Mariota from now on. Trying to send pressure here as we move Juan on here over to cover Kyle Pitts. But we are trying to send that heat to get Marcus Mariota off this game. But their offensive line does great to get great pressure. And, it, and of course, of course, it's Xavier Howard. Clearly our best cornerback by a mile. He forces the first incompletion of the game for Marcus Mariota, as it is Xavier Howard making the pass breakup, not the pick, but again, a pass breakup on, on Marcus Mariota right now is amazing, as he does find Kyle Pitts wide open, as that was my zone with Jerome Baker. I took full blame for that. Look at him, 14 for 15, but of course, of course it's Xavier Howard to make the stop. Again, running that man to man, let's press up here. as huge as Javon Holland over the top. It looks like it might be a run here, but hopefully if it is a pass, we can finally get the stop, as it does look like it's a run. And Javon Holland meets him in the gap, doesn't make the tackle, but who else? Xavier Howard and Emmanuel Ogba carry our defense, man, as he makes an incredible play on the run. And, man, it's the Xavier Howard, Jalen Waddle, Tua Tungvaluwa, and Emmanuel Ogba show, man. Usually Javon Holland over the middle here, and he does get the ball to Kyle Pitts, but a nice hit stick by Javon Holland as he claps it up on Kyle Pitts. A nice hit by Javon Holland, using that man-to-man -man pressure, and it is the end of the third quarter. To start the fourth quarter here, we are doing a zone and a man sending only four, but hopefully they can get some pressure with Jalen Phillips and Emmanuel Ogba as they haven't been. And then Marcus Mariota makes a good throw to Kevin Ridley, but Nick Needham makes a good tackle. Man, Marcus Mariota, keep on showing that arm. Keep taking what I said seriously, man, and keep taking it as disrespect. You should. I feel bad for saying it now. I am calling Marcus Mariota to make up for it as we are using Jerome Baker and hopefully to get to Marcus Mariota quick, but they do pick up the ball with Cordero Patterson and then Xavier. Oh no, that's not Xavier Howard. Javon Holland makes an incredible interception. 
to get Marcus Mariota's, or sorry, Marcus Mariota's second incompletion of the game. It's not just an incompletion, it's an interception, as it's Javon Holland. I thought it was Xavier Howard because of the way he made the play, but it's actually Javon Holland. As our two primary ball hawks in Xavier Howard and Javon Holland continue to make plays on the ball in the air like they would in real life. Chase Edmonds with a nice run here. But yeah, again, my apologies. I thought it was Xavier Howard because of how good the play was, but Javon Holland's an amazing ball hawk too, a top 10 safety in the league, and he showed why he is that. Second and two here, I did think I was going to run, but they are clogging up the pass. So we are going to run the play action to hopefully get them to bite. As I do see Jalen Waddle open on that route, but unfortunately, Tua Tunga Vailoa cannot hit him. But still, Tua already having three touchdowns, 20 for 28, 300 yards. He has made a couple inaccurate throws, which will happen with these young quarterbacks. He's only in his third year, but honestly, for the most part, I don't really know how I can be mad at this game so far. Again, was did have the intention to pass there, but we are going to flip the play to a run because I do like what it looks like for Raheem Mostert as he does get the first down up the middle as they do try and stop him, but he does have 10 rushes for 51 yards for that first down. Let's actually start chewing the clock a little bit here because if we do score points here, we will go up at least a touchdown. So definitely want to start chewing the clock a little bit so the Falcons don't have as much time to work with as we do step up in the pocket. Looking for Mike Kosicki over the top. What a great pass from Tua Tungavailoa and a good catch from Mike Kosicki to get that first down. He has been a stud as well. Mike Kosicki has been so good. He's the That's the reason he's the only one to get a contract extension that far as he is the one who clearly deserves it as Tua with pressure on it makes a great throw to Mike Kosicki going back to the run here with Raheem Mostert following the blocks but unfortunately again the Falcons have done an amazing job on Raheem Mostert and Chase Edmonds so far there's a reason we've gone in away from the run a little bit here in the second half is because they have been shutting that down so I was gonna say shutting that bleep down but don't want to say that but yeah uh, they've been shutting down the run game except for this play Raheem Mostert gets a first down or close to a first down as it is a first down again they still have done a good job in general of stopping the run, so that's why we had gone away from it for a little bit. But now, chewing that clock, running down the field. I was going to run here, but I do see Tyreek wide open. As if he runs a streak here, I have no idea who's going to stop him. So let's just block everyone and get Tyreek open down the middle of the field. This should be a free touchdown. And I wasn't even looking at the clock because so we were chewing the clock. I just made the most dumb play ever. Oh my god. I just had Tyreek wide open for a touchdown. I was just going to put him on a streak, let him get a touchdown. But I wanted to secure it, so I just was going to put everyone on the block. But then I forget I'm running two clock, and the clock runs down. So, by the way, you guys are going to think, wow, what an idiot. He really missed Tyreek on the wide open play. Why didn't he just snap the ball and go? As you saw, I was trying to commentate and play. When you commentate and play games, it's really hard to keep track of everything that's going on. So sometimes I do lose track of the play clock. Again, I should be aware of that. But again, that's something I have is when you do record these videos. And as you see, Tua Tagovailoa unfortunately makes a very young play where he makes a young mistake. And unfortunately, that costs us a touchdown with Tyreek Hill. But at least that gives Chase Edmonds the chance to run for a long-ass play. But yeah, again, just wanted to explain why that happened with Tyreek Hill. As again, don't want to see that in the future. But yeah, that's just what happens when you record these videos, man. You're so focused on commentating. You're so focused on the game. Or not, not on the game, but what you're going to say about the game. Then you can lose track of time like that. So it's really unfortunate as we did lose another passing touchdown for Tua Tunga Vailoa. But again, it does let us burn a little bit more clock anyway. So I'm actually okay with that a little bit. Using Chase Edmonds here to hopefully get this first down on the third and inches. As he does break a tackle and does get to the 11-yard line as we continue to run down the Atlanta Falcons' throats. Uh, at the start of the drive, I was talking about how they have done such a good job to stop a run in the first half. But on this drive, it's been all the run game as now we're going to give the ball to Tyreek Hill on the end round type play and see if he can run in for the touchdown. As he does get around the first guy, no, he doesn't. Never mind. I see he makes a great tackle on Tyreek Hill to keep it at second and nine. Gonna go back to the run game here. Let's actually give the ball to Sony Michelle. Give him a touch here. Again, I do want to keep him involved. It is hard to get three running backs involved, but it is what we want to do. So that is what we are going to do here with Sony Michelle. As he does bounce off a couple of tackles and gets a few yards, and now it is third down. Mike McDaniel clearly only wanted to run pass plays, as that's the only place he gave me an option to run after that play so that is what we are doing as i'm rolling out with tua and i'm actually just gonna run with tua for the touchdown a rushing touchdown for tua showing off those legs now that his hip is back and fully healed showing off those legs three passing touchdowns for tua and now a rushing touchdown with tua tunga vailoa up 11 now 31 to 20 over the atlanta falcons it's crazy how everything really just flipped the switch really quickly after that first half as we do try and jalen phillips in his comeback game gets the sack 
on his first game back from injury but what i was going to say was it's crazy how we're up 11 now as we've scored 21 straight points and we've held the falcons to zero after the second half like it's crazy how we just flipped that switch to show the team we really are as the falcons came out hot man 21 to 10 to start this second half we were really kind of out of our game plan out of what we wanted to do but Tua shows out that arm and now it's literally been a 21 to nothing game in the second half we really just flipped the switch to show how good we can be as now we have forced the falcons back into the position where they're down 11 with under two minutes left and yeah defense has stepped up the run game stepped up tremendously and now we do get a pick from javon holland a sack from jalen phillips and Tua a tongue of continuing to do well as they are just reviewing this play but it's really doesn't really matter i don't really care if it's overturned or not as it is overturned as they get three yards so it's not third and 12 instead of third and 13 or instead of third and 15 so not too different to me as we are going to send the pressure here and we are going to use this guy on xavier howard because we do know it's a streak with drake london so we might as well just use her ourselves as we are as he is throwing it up to drake london we do know what play it was at first and xavier howard almost gets the interception as he went up to make a play on the ball but unfortunately it was not to be so unfortunately we do not get to use that again we have all the momentum so that's why we can see their route as we are going to use with brandon jones because we know what route he's going to run so we can cover it perfectly as he just throw it up to xavier howard and xavier howard for whatever reason does not make a play on the ball i was holding triangle so we should have went up for the ball but for whatever reason he didn't make a play on the ball so uh, that's weird with xavier howard as marcus mario does have room to run and then jerome baker steps up for no reason and Kyle Pitts gets a first down on our 15-yard line, as that's a huge passing favor of Marcus Mariota. I have no idea why Jerome Baker just started to run away from him. That was so weird, but whatever. Back into the zone here, using your training Tyndall, as this game just got a little bit closer, really crazy. Again, I don't know why Xavier Howard didn't go for the ball, and I don't, why, I don't know why Jerome Baker kind of just left his man there, as Brandon Jones is a great tackler in the box. So you're going to go man-to-man -man here, use the inside, make sure they are doing a pass play, which they are. Kenny Tyndall covering over the middle, and he does go over the middle, but Jerome Baker makes up for his play, forces the incompletion and the third down. Doesn't really matter because it is four down football for the Atlanta Falcons, so we're only going to rush three, try and just cover them to death as we're going to press here and make sure we're covering the flats as well. Jerome Baker using over the middle. I don't know who he's going to throw for as we aren't getting any pressure, but we did only rush three, so that makes sense. As someone gets wide open in the back of the end zone, I don't know what happened there. I don't know if a corner got sucked down to another route or whatever. But we didn't, honestly, that I don't even blame that side of the defense. I actually blame the pass rush because even though we only rushed three, you'd expect to get pass rush within 10 freaking seconds. So that's really on the defensive line and not the users. As Marcus Mariota does step up and I cannot make the play with Jerome Baker. So they actually do get the point conversion as well as now they probably will go for the onside kick is what I would assume as they are. So we do need to get the hand seam out. As this game just got real close, really fast, as they do make the play and Chase Edmonds does pick up the ball as we're just going to go down nice and easy with Chase Edmonds at the 45-yard line and hopefully ice this game. Running this end around play to Tyreek or we have the option to give it to Mostert, but we do give it to Raheem Mostert because we don't want to risk anything happening. They are going to try and take their timeouts, but we are really just trying to drain this clock and not give them any opportunity to get the ball back. We were dominating them in the second half, but unfortunately they do have that late drive where kind of everything went wrong for us. So they did have that late drive. So we are going to try and just run the clock. Here's Raheem Mostert gets stuck behind the plays, but he does do a good job to get up the field. And now it is third down. We're putting the ball into a tongue of Iloa's hands as a first down does end this game. And that is what we want to do. Want to make sure we call a good play. So let's run this wide cross drag, giving him a bunch of options. Putting the ball into his hands. If he gets a first down, the game's over. If not, the game does continue. So let's see what's get opened here. As I do see Chase Evans out of the backfield. And then the Atlanta Falcons get a sack. As I did not even see them as they get instant pressure. That's why I backed up so much. I was going to try and step up in the pocket, but they get instant pressure. And it is 4th and 19, and we are forced to punt. So the Falcons are going to get the ball back with the chance to tie. But if we pin them deep with Thomas Morissette, they won't have a great chance. Hopefully that's a decent punt. As it is, Keon Crossing, get your butt down there. And unfortunately, there is no backspin. So they will start from the 20. 25 seconds left for them to get a field goal. Hopefully we can get a stop here. Again, all we want to do is keep everything in front of the Falcons and make sure they cannot get in field goal range so that they can hit a field goal. Hopefully using Jerome Baker here over the middle. As he just floated up and Marcus Mariota finally throws an actual incompletion again as is young Hoku as they do need to get 
to the 37 yard line which would be around a 54 yarder for young hoku so that is what they're trying to do that is what that red line there is back there but we are trying to keep them in front of the we are trying to keep them in front of us and hopefully not even allow them to chance to get the field goal as he does have Kyle Pitts wide open but he throws it up to Xavier Howard but unfortunately it is too deep for even Xavier Howard to get so Marcus Mariota basically just throwing that away on third and ten we're gonna throw some heat we are gonna back up our cornerbacks because we do want to make sure that they don't get down the field but we are gonna send the heat man as Jerome Baker and oh my god Marcus Mariota breaks the play and he throws the ball away I don't know how we didn't get the sack there I it was a DB I think it might have been Javon Holland who was making the play on the quarterback so I do get it in that sense it's not a D it's not a D lineman it's a guy in the secondary who didn't make the attempt to sack him but he shakes off the sack and does throw the ball away so now they have a chance for a Hail Mary so hopefully they do not pull off this Hail Mary Three seconds as Marcus Mariota floats it up. We are trying to use Xavier Howard to get the pick, and they almost catch the ball, but they don't. And that is the end of the game. I don't know why any of my games can't just be a blowout. I guess last game against the Jaguars was a blowout, but the game is finally over, as this game should have been not that exciting. Honestly, it should have been a little bit more boring than that, but it does have an exciting finish. And now Miami Dolphins are dapping up the Atlanta Falcons to a tongue by Loa, dapping up Kyle Pitts there, two young stars dapping up at the end of the game with Emmanuel Ogba taking a picture at the end of the game. And man, we did complete the goal with Tua and we got the dub, so I can't be too mad about that. Just a little bit mad about how the game ended. Man, Marcus Marigoda did play great. Two touchdowns, one pick, 21 for 29. And then Tua honestly played amazing. 22 for 30 and three touchdowns, no picks. Like, what more do you want from the guy? He has been great. Iverson's throwing a bunch of picks in that Bills game and that Raiders game. He's really shut it down in terms of throwing interceptions and now has only thrown. I don't think he's even thrown a pick since those games. He's only thrown touchdowns, so that's great from him. Rushing wise, Raheem Moser played great. Chase Edmonds played great. Cordero Patterson had a good game. Marcus Mariota had a good game in his own right. Tua with that rushing touchdown, so that's really good to see from him. Receiving wise, Cam Ridley did have a nice game with 113 yards and one touchdown, but just behind him is Jalen Waddle, 106 yards, two touchdowns, so that's great for him. Drake London doing good as a rookie. Mike Kosicki playing really well. And Tyree Kill, again, didn't get going too much here. But, again, he might have been open on a couple throws. I might have missed some. That might just be on me. But definitely want to take a couple more shots with Tyree Kill. But it's fine. He has had some crazy games. And he still is, like, top five in receiving for the league. But wasn't his game today. It was the Jalen Waddle show. So that's fine with me. As far as defense goes, we did have a bunch of sacks. Kamiko Ture continues to be really good for the Falcons. As I believe he's one of the sack leaders. But the rest of sacks is from us. Christian Wilkins having a sack. Amado Ogba having a sack. These two have been stars for our defense. Have been playing amazing. And then Jalen Phillips in his comeback game having a sack, which is really important. So great for Jalen Phillips as he does finally come back from injury. And he is making an instant impact. And kicking wise, everything was perfect from here. Young Hoku and Jason Sanders. So that's an amazing finish to that game. As we do end the game, we do have a couple upgrades. One upgrade for Emmanuel Ogba. Let's upgrade Power Rusher just to try and make him that much more dominant as a Power Rusher. As he gets plus two power moves, plus one pursuit, and plus one tackle. Those are amazing upgrades. For Robert Hunt, we are going to get him agile because we do want him to become a scheme fit at some point. As he is a bigger guy, but we do want him to strive in this Mike McDaniel run zone scheme offense. And the River Crow Crafter kick return does get a skill point to upgrade so let's just do deep there hopefully get plus one speed or something so we can be a little bit more threatening on those kick returns as he doesn't but that's fine as he is just here as a returner as a safe returner so that's good to see now let's see what we do get for that offensive breakout with Tua Tagovailoa, and we are talking to Jalen Waddle as Mike McDaniel. I told you we're really getting going as an offense. Everybody wants to make plays. It's not just going to be a mentality. It's going to be our identity soon. I completely agree with that, Jalen Waddle. Thank you for saying that. It's been fun to watch seeing that hopeless look on the faces of defenders. Defensive coordinators will never get old. Keep it up, Mike McDaniel. Talking shit. Love to see it. Tua Tagovailoa talking shit to Arthur Smith and backing it up on the field. Love to see that. And core all quarterbacks. So basically our starting quarterback because we're not going to put Teddy Bridgewater in for any. Plays, obviously so quarterbacks will have plus five short medium and deep throw accuracy for the next three games so Tua is on a tilt right now all wide receivers will have plus five catching traffic spec catch next three games wow that is crazy our receivers and quarterbacks getting a huge boost there for the next three games so we should be passing the ball a lot and honestly it is needed as the Texans aren't that good so we aren't too worried about them but against the Bills in Buffalo we are definitely going to need those upgrades and against Lamar and the Ravens like we just saw how good Marcus Mariota was as a deep threat as like a 75 overall or whatever overall he is in the game and imagine Lamar Jackson because he's an amazing he's the best dual threat maybe we've ever seen and are facing him in week 10 so we're definitely going to need those upgrades so thank god we did get those upgrades for the next three games with that being said though Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.